You're watching Message Monday with Cora Jakes Coleman. Thank you for watching the show. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad that you decided to start your Monday off with me because I decided to start my Monday off with you. And so I hope you had a wonderful weekend because remember, we are turning our Mondays into Message Mondays. Not Messy Mondays, but Message Mondays. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you all today on the topic of expectation. And I want to talk about that because I believe that in life, we always expect God to do great and mighty works in us, but we don't expect that the enemy is going to attack us because of our expectation. So if you are expecting, you must expect that the enemy is going to try to detour you, that he's going to try to discourage you, that he's going to try to make you have doubt. And we don't want you to be in a position where you cannot deliver because of the doubt and the discouragement and the depression that comes along with having to release your will and to release basically what you're expecting for whatever God has for you. And in the real scheme of things, we can expect for God to, to do great things and we can think for God to do great things. We can even ask for God to do great things. But if we are really standing on the word of God, then we know that he's going to exceed that. He's going to exceed our expectation. And because we have been granted so much favor in the kingdom of God and in our lives and so much favor in, in what what we're doing in in the world we have been given such a such a responsibility such a responsibility that the enemy is angry about he's upset about because the minute that you begin to walk in your purpose the minute that you begin to walk in your power then the enemy is threatened there is a threatening that comes when you begin to do what God's asked you to do there is a threatening that comes to the kingdom of hell when you decide to do what God has asked you to do we know that what the enemy meant for evil God is going to turn it around for good. So this brings me up to my message Monday. And my message today is, if you are expecting, expect. And I mean that by saying, you cannot expect that God is going to do great things and the enemy is not going to try you, that he's not going to test you, that he's not going to try to detour you, that he's not going to try to distract you. The distractions and the discouragement and the sadness and the confusion, all of that comes right when you have reached the level of clarity. Whenever you have reached a level of clarity in God, then the enemy will always try to bring about confusion. You must understand this. And if you expect that, then you can then you know what to pray for. When you expect the, the enemy coming, when you expect the weapon coming, then you know what to pray for. You know how to defeat it. You know what to to cover yourself with. You know how to how to defeat the enemy before he even tries. And so how do I do that? I say, Lord, I'm expecting you to do a great and mighty work because you said that you will do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that I could ever ask or think. So before my expectation, God, I pray that you would undergird me in the strength and the endurance that I need to get through the tests and the trials that are going to come because of what I asked for. And I, I want you to not be afraid to ask. I want you to not be afraid to think. I want you to not be afraid to go after what God has for you simply because of the obstacles and the hindrances that may come along the way. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, that, that is not a conditional statement. That doesn't come with rules or regulations. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is going to make it work out for your good because all things, all things, even the things that the enemy is trying to distract you with and detour you with, all things work together for the good of those who have been called according to his purpose. And I believe that there's a purpose in you. 
I believe that there's a call in you. And I believe that you are a huge threat to the enemy. That when you begin to operate in your gifts, when you begin to plant the seed of your gift and you nourish it and you grow it, that it threatens the enemy's territory. It threatens where he is standing. And so you have to be the type of person to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You have to be the type of person that says, I will look to the hills for which cometh my help and that I will not lean on to my own understanding, but I will trust in the Lord in all my ways for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I believe that I'm a good man, human. It, when, when we see man in the Bible, sometimes he's talking about the gender specific male, but sometimes he's speaking of humankind, man kind, us all. And so the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, a good human those steps are ordered by the Lord. And if you believe that you are good, if you believe that you are doing good, then don't be weary in good doing. Don't be weary in well doing for in due season, if you want to reap, if you want to reap, then it shall come. Don't faint and don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord for it is your reasonable service to do so. Trust in the Lord because it is necessary in order for you to get to the top of the mountain. Is it hard to climb a mountain? Of course, you may need some gear, you may need some protective gear, you may need some snacks, some food, some water, some nourishment, but you climb, you climb, you climb until you get to the desired vision. Some people make it halfway and they say, this is good, I like the view from here. Some people say, I wanna go higher so I can get a better view. So it is really about where you want your vision to start and where you want it to end. And as long as you have the necessary tools and resources, to get to where you desire to be, then you will reach that destination and you will be able to look back at all of the things that you overcame. You'll be able to look back at that time that you wanted to kill yourself. You'll be able to look back at that time that you wanted to give up. You'll be able to look back at that time that you were crying in your bed, not knowing what, what was going to happen next. You'll be able to look back at that time when you didn't have the financial overflow that you have now. You'll be able to look back at all of the things that you've overcome, your testimony, and you'll be able to say, devil, you tried to stop me. You try to stop my vision, you try to stop my view, but I kept, I kept the course. I kept going forward. I walked like God would have me to walk and he led me in the path of righteousness for his namesake and he completed a good work in me. You thought I wasn't good enough to be at the top of the mountain, but I made it here. I've got some scrapes, I've got some bruises, I was tired, I've sweated, I've even cried, my legs have been burning, my steps have been hard, but I got to the top of the mountain. And so I want to pray, to you, pray for you today that God would provoke you to keep walking, that God would provoke you to produce, and that God would provoke you to continue though he slay you, that you will trust him in your suffering. So God, I thank you. I thank you that you have given us each a specific power. But more importantly, God, I thank you that you've given each of us a specific view and a specific vision. I ask, oh God, that you would just cover us as we go to the top of this mountain, that you would just cover us as we try to reach what you've called us to do, God. Would you allow us to be able to build the endurance necessary that we do not lack? God, help us to stand, help us to be strong, help us not to be weary, help us not to faint, for you said that you are able to keep us from falling. So God, we call on you to be our refuge. Lord, you are our refuge in the time of trouble. And because of that, you will keep us from all harm and danger. So God, allow us to dwell in you today. And we give you glory and praise and honor for it is so. And so it is. I do hope that you have decided to make this week a week of transition and transformation. That by the end of the week, you have done something that you never thought you could do. By the end of the week, that you've released a message to someone that you never thought you'd talk to. I hope that by the end of the week, your Monday has become a message and not a morning. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye.